Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from AWPS Renewable Energy in Lagos, Nigeria. So today, we're going to talk about batteries, okay? So I know you're looking at these um, lithium batteries. And this is, who is that? GSL. This is supposed to be 200 amp hours and there are two of them. There's a the second one. And then right behind it is another battery. That's by Top Band. So this was made by GSL, and here's a master, there's a slave, and there is the other one by Top Band. Now, you go online, right, and you decide you want to buy a lithium battery, and you know, if they tell you, oh, lithium is all good, we use someone's cells, who sells it, they tell you they use. So you can see, let me tell you, let me show you this about this, 200 amp hours. So from this charge voltage is 7.6 so I'll, so I'll guess that this is a 16s when they're telling you 51.2 hmm i still think it's a 16s we'll open it later today and we'll take a look but why am i doing this video so you know you go online and you want to buy a lithium battery and some manufacturers will tell you oh we use um, ev cells which is which is supposed to be the industry standard right and that seems to be their claim to fame however there is much more to the battery than ev cells but i don't look at this sucker it's huge i'm six a little under six two and it's almost at my hip so it tells you this sucker is big it has casters see that it has casters and more. back to where what i was saying so you go online they tell you easy v cells they tell you easy cells and it's all fine it's all wonderful right but that is not the most important part of the battery. What do you think is the most important part of the battery? Why do you think the pylon techs or the solar axes of the world do very, very well? You know, this is um, what's it saying. This was the pouch that, exp that went bad in our diner's battery. But even though the pouch went bad, the electronics remained intact. In this situation, the BMSs on all three have failed. So the customer purchased this we the customer purchased this we didn't purchase it for him he installed it in less than two months the bms failed the manufacturer sent a replacement bms for that one and then not too long after when my people went there this one had failed and it seems as if the manufacturer had anticipated a failure and sent two bms's so that is the trick it's not the cells it's the electronics and the battery on this one top band we purchased five batteries two have had bmss fail we replaced the bms on this and guess what it's failed again you push it to run and it would come on but once it senses the inverter it goes into alarm mode so now they're saying well it's not a quality issue yes it's a bloody quality issue what else would it be it is not doing what it's supposed to do it's less than six months old and this is where it's sitting how does that make any sense so seriously folks when you're going to go buy these batteries right it all sounds exciting and yes they'll give you support they'll replace uh, parts that are broken but do you really need to go through that pain do you really need to, re do you really need to find out that the battery you just purchased the electronics on it will, will go bad while the inter while the battery cells themselves remain okay so my word of caution i'm not telling you not to buy gsl i'll definitely tell you not to buy the top band for now until they get their act together i'm not telling you not to buy gsls yet i'm not also telling you to buy them because for the two batteries he purchased to both fail um that's a little too much it's not just a coincidence it's a quality control issue and it's also a you know inability to make electronics that could do what this these things are supposed to do. So let me give you an example of what the BMS does. So a BMS, what it does is it manages um, the charge on each cell. So in this case, if there are 16 cells, there are 16 leads connected to each of the cells and it monitors when it charges and it monitors when it discharges and then it stops a charge, stops a discharge when the parameters do not meet. And in some of these BMSs, they also put a balancing option in it. Or an equalizing option where it's moving from one cell to the other and that will generate heat and if that happens too often um, which it possibly can that can cause well 
that shouldn't cause the BMS to fail, but I'm guessing that that's what's happening here, and that's what causing was causing these BMSs to fail. And we set very very aggressive um, no battery cutoffs. Um, we set the maximum of ninety percent. Sometimes we even set sorry um, sorry we have twenty percent left. Sometimes ten percent left. Very rarely do we have less than ten percent left. And if the customer is going to be discharging high loads. We set it to cut off at 20%. So we use 80% and keep 20%. And um, that, that allows the cells to stay pretty balanced. We, don't, we shouldn't be getting any cell drift. And that minimizes how, how, how much work the BMS should be doing. So in my opinion, until these manufacturers have had experience for a while, like a pylon tech, and have gotten around their issues with the electronics, I would say buy them with caution. If you've not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria.